Hi, thank you for joining me. I want to talk today about the idea of an overlap and consensus in John Rawls's uh, second most famous book, uh, his book Political Liberalism, which of course he wrote in uh, so, some 20 years after a theory of justice. Gradually over time he lost confidence in the ability of his masterful theory and theory of justice to serve as a uniting point in liberal democratic societies around the world. And as he mentions throughout the book Political Liberalism, one of the main reasons why he lost confidence in his theory of justice was that the world over the last several decades has grown increasingly pluralistic and people from a variety of different kinds of traditions, faith backgrounds, belief backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, uh, racial backgrounds, socioeconomic backgrounds, we now all live together in liberal democracies. And Rawls especially, of course, being an American theorist, has America in mind. And he's concerned by the time he publishes political liberalism that his a theory of justice in its original form is not going to serve as a sufficiently unifying set of principles to be able to serve as uh, ties for the citizens of liberal democracies in the late 20th and now early 21st centuries. And so famously he starts off in political liberalism by saying how is it possible for there to be, over time, a society that is just, that is fair, and that is equal among citizens when those citizens are uh, perpetually divided from each other by their reasonable comprehensive doctrines? And an important part of uh, Rawls's plan for coming up with a revision to his theory of justice so as to continue in some degree at least, to uh, offer liberalism as the bedrock of liberal democracies, as at least the political uh, set of principles that liberal democracies should abide by. An important part of that is the overlapping consensus. Let me briefly describe what he means by an overlapping consensus. For Rawls, each one of us in liberal democracies has what he calls a reasonable comprehensive doctrine. Now these terms are all loaded and have extensive background meanings that he develops at length, but suffice to say that a reasonable comprehensive doctrine is more or less a, a comprehensive view of the world. Uh, the, the Muslim has a comprehensive view of the world that is reasonable, it makes sense from his particular point of view, Rawls would say. I'm a Christian philosopher and uh, Christians too, Rawls would say, have a reasonable and comprehensive doctrine that enables them to interpret the world and to understand the world. And Rawls takes a very pluralistic view of these sorts of things and says that, there, look, there are a variety of different ways of understanding the world that are all perfectly legitimate and all respectable and uh, make sense. They all make sense given the assumptions that the people who hold them have um, as their background points of view. At any rate, we all have these reasonable comprehensive doctrines, and Rawls envisions these reasonable comprehensive doctrines forming a kind of an overlapping consensus. By that, what he means is a kind of a common political sphere in which each person, from the perspective of his own reasonable comprehensive doctrine, can adhere to a set of common principles. And this is a very bold claim on Rawls's part. He thinks here at this point that it is possible for all of the adherents of the world's reasonable comprehensive doctrines uh, to be able to endorse the political principles of his political liberalism, his revised theory of justice, and this is key, from within their own reasonable comprehensive doctrines. That is, he thinks that uh, they can all participate uh, in the overlapping consensus from their own viewpoints, 
by their own assumptions on grounds that are compatible with their own perspective. And this is why he thinks that it is possible if the political principles are set up correctly for the uh, theory of justice, the revised theory of justice that he establishes and lays out in political liberalism to continue to serve as a basis for the cooperative sensibilities of the citizens of liberal democracies. Now, there are, of course, criticisms of this overlapping consensus idea. The most prominent criticism, perhaps, is that Rawls, who repeatedly insists that the political conception of justice that he espouses is not itself a reasonable comprehensive doctrine, but rather that it is a, an object of overlapping consensus among reasonable comprehensive doctrines. Many critics allege that the political consensus is, in fact, whether Rawls likes it or not, a comprehensive doctrine. And arguably, we could call this first criticism the Trojan horse criticism. Rawls is smuggling into his theory a kind of Trojan horse where liberalism serves as a comprehensive view of the world that he is asserting that we need to make as the uh, single most important uh, body of political principles in a liberal democracy. And the critics allege here that Rawls is not being uh, forthright and that in fact he is trying to smuggle in his own reasonable comprehensive doctrine, his own worldview, if you will, his own perspective, and he's trying to make it the dominant one that takes precedence over other worldviews. There are other criticisms that have been lodged against the idea of an overlapping consensus. One example of a second criticism is Rawls's assertion that it is possible for the adherence of different reasonable comprehensive doctrines to assert the uh, correctness or to see the correctness of the political conception of justice from within their own points of view. And here a lot of critics, uh, the second criticism, a lot of critics have alleged that uh, this is actually not nearly as easy as Rawls claims that it is. Uh, liberalism often does violence uh, to other worldviews when other worldviews encounter it, and by that I mean that it forces changes in them and compels them to alter uh, certain key ideas or doctrines in order to conform to liberalism's expectations and requirements. And so critics have alleged that in fact it would cause great psychological bifurcation and destruction in the minds of uh, the adherents of different worldviews for them to uh, agree to and espouse the uh, political conception of justice as Rawls conceives of it.